So uh, for the next speaker, I think all of us know he's a well-known. It's not only in Asia Pacific, but it's all over the world. Professor Chi Long Li. So uh, he will talk about how does the endometriosis, DIE, impact on fertility. He's a professor from uh, Changkung University. He is the uh, boss of Tassi of the APES. And he has a lot of the, how I say, the experience, not only for surgery, but also on the academic, uh, how to treat, how to do the laparoscopic surgery. He has the student all over in the Asia and all over the world. So please, Professor Chilongli. Hi, thank you. So, all right, Rick. Uh, and uh, I think that today is very meaningful. Yeah, because the when the minimally invasive meet with the lung invasive surgery, I think that is a, uh, we can have uh, some spark and uh, discussing about the uh, what Haifu can do uh, for more for the, for the endometriosis and uh, also the what the Laparoscopic surgery can help high food to complete some uh, work and uh, maybe high food is not well established. So I think the meeting is very meaningful. I hope all of you will enjoy uh, all the talk and uh, I hope uh, you can join the, the next webinar also because the four high food webinar will be all very uh, fruitful. Uh, in your career. And so thank you very much for your introduction. And uh, I, let's begin uh, my speech. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Dr. Arik. And also thanks, Dr. Reddy, for your kind introductions. Today, I want to talk about how does deep endometriosis impact reproductive outcome? The deep endometriosis it's a very troublesome hard work for the gynecologist. I'm very pleased to announce a page, ISMIC and the Chongjun Haifu have a joint enterprise agreement for the promote minimally and the lung invasive therapy. And uh, I'm also the chairman of both trustees. In the 2017, we have a very successful annual congress in Okoyama, Japan. And toward 18th, we have the annual meeting in Surabaya, Indonesia. Ready, thanks for your hard work. And uh, in uh, 2019, we have a uh, 20th annual Congress in Chongqing, China again. It's a very successful meeting. The participants, more than 3,500 people there. And in 2021, RPH 21st annual Congress in Yokohama, Japan. It's also a very successful one. They have more than 3,000 participants in this Congress. And in this year, the annual Congress will be in Taipei, Taiwan from the September 30th to the October 2nd. Welcome you to join us. I also very pleased to announce our fine journal, GMIT, gynecology and the minimally invasive therapy. They have a very high impact factor. The impact factor is 1.3 in 2021. I expect they will be have a, some more increase in this year. Welcome to submit your fine paper. Today, we want to talk about the deep endometriosis. Actually, the endometriosis in reproductive women is quite a lot. They estimate have a 10% in women in reproductive age. So about 176 million people suffer from the disease worldwide. So the instance in asymptomatic women is two to 11%. In infertile women, they have five to up to 50% have endometriosis. The women hospitalized for pelvic pain, they're up to the 21%. And uh, I want to give you an example, the IVF treatment without a diagnosis of the deep endometriosis or endometriosis, not only decreased the optimate clinical practice rate, and it also have a not without potential serious adverse effect. So we can find the paper from Jimmy last year, a case of an abscess cystic in the maturity lesions in the vesicle uterine pouch after oocyte retrieval. It's quite rare. 
most of the QR access will happen in the posterior cortex sac, but this one is in the anterior cortex sac of the outside retriever. The paper is from the Dr. Chicago from Japan. It's a 31 years old nonipolis woman visited the clinic due to the Watson dysmenorrhoeus. So a cystic in the maturity lesion was found in the vesicle uterine patch. Her first outside retrieval attempt was performed at IVF center before the print surgery. And he complained of abdominal pain on day six after the retrieval. So Dr. Shikaku diagnosed with the peritonitis with an abscess uh, cystic in the maturity lesion in the vesicle uterine patch. And so they gave them the conservative treatment two weeks, but in effect, it. so operation was arranged. The cyst of the vesicle uterine patch was drained out. And so they made conclusions. The presence of endometrial mass could be a risk factor of developing of an abscess. Also, the small pool of the old black coat act as a median for growth of the bacteria that have to transvaginally inoculate at the time of outside retrieval. This bacteria can easily grow in the schist and cause pelvic abscess. So the GMIT published the data about a case of an abscess schistic in the maturity lesions after the outside retrieval. So in mild and the minimal in the mature schist, the mechanisms of a mild and the minimal in the mature schist with the infertility because they have a toxic effect on the main embryo and the impair of the tuber motilities. And also in the matrix imprint secret pro-inflammatory cytokines, just like the interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-8, interleukin-6, and also the TNF alpha, and also the estrogen and progesterone, which attract macrophage and the BEGF and the interleukin-8, thus create an inflammatory status impaired the fertilities. Secondly, they have an end a normal follicular environment. And uh, because of height in cytokines, and uh, also they have an uh, inflammatory status. So also they have an uh, enhanced ability of the phagocytos, the sprint by the peritoneal macrophages, and a reduced rate of the fertilizations. So of course they will make infertilities and uh, an impairment of implantation rate, and uh, also the endometrial receptivity. Moreover, for the moderate and the severe disease, they can have an impairment of the outside relief because of the adhesions of endometriomas, the outside retrieval or outside relief sometimes is very difficult. Also an impairment of the tube transport because of the adhesion formation, sometimes have some phimosis of the tube and also breakages of the sperm migrations. So they have a interfere the outside and the burnt joint together. And uh, what is the best choice for the treatment, medical versus the surgical treatment? Or maybe we need both. But what comes first? Here we will discuss about what will be the best choice and what comes first. First, if the patient has a high risk of the ovarian cancers, in these situations, to have the T-shop approved is very important. So that is the patient should have uh, received the surgery. We should note the risk of the ovarian cancer in the patient with the endometrioma. Although they are not evident that endometriosis caused cancer, but some cancer are slightly more common in women with endometriosis, just not Hodgkin lymphoma and the ovarian cancers. And a higher risk of the histologic subgroup of the ovarian cancer, significantly increased risk of the clear cell ovarian cancer. The odd rate is 3.05 and the low grade serious ovarian cancers are rate 2.11. The endometrial invasion of ovarian cancers are raised 2.04. They have uh, some endometriosis impaired, some teachers concerned about the endometriosis impaired fertilities. Normally, the monthly fertility rate is about uh, 15 to 20 percent. But the patient with endometriosis, they will decrease the monthly fertility rate to 2 to 10 percent. And uh, also, they will impact uh, the art outcome. They have a 7% decrease of fertility rate in stage 1 to endometriosis. And uh, they have 21% decrease in the stage 3 4 endometriosis. And also, they have a low outside retrieval rate in the stage 3 and 4 endometriosis. And also, they have a consensus for the endometriosis. 
the surgery for women with symptomatic endometriosis for pain or recurrence, laparoscopic surgery removal of endometriosis is an effective first line approach for the treating pain relative to the endometriosis. And also the laparoscopic surgery for the endometriosis show always be undertaken in prevalence of the laparotomy when possible. And the schistectomy is better than the just the drainage to minimize the symptom recurrence and the endometriosis in the mature mark recurrence. Should surgery be performed for complete removal of endometriosis before the art? Before art, diagnosis and operoscope when performed, the complete removal of the lesions is quite helpful to increase the higher implantation rate and the precursor rate and light burst rate in the patient that have a complete removal of the endometriosis. So in the stage three, stage four endometriosis, if you have a removal of the lesions, they have a much higher of the pinkish rate, spontaneous pinkish rate up to the 57 to 69% versus 33% in patient with the moderate endometriosis and up to 52% to 68% versus 0% in severe endometriosis. So we can find in the stage three and stage four, they increase much higher in the pinkish rate when compared with the natri group. How about deep endometriosis? Deep endometriosis is one kind of the endometriosis, not the same with the superficial endometriosis or endometriomas. Deep endometriosis have the about the 1% in women in the reproductive age, about 10% in the patient with endometriosis. According to the anatomic, they will involve vaginus, uricycle ligament, bowel, bladders, and the ureters. So, the deep endometriosis also impacted the fertility because they have some adhesions and also they have some superficial imprint and also have endometrioma formations and sometimes they have a getting the adenomyces and also they will coexist of other type of endometriosis and they will make produce of the inflammatory cytokine and the chemokine so it will be have a interfere with fertility. And it's also, they have a poor follicular genesis because of the poor follicular genesis. So they have a fewer oocyte can be retrieved. And also they can have a adenomyces formations and they have a many different form, includes in the counting ligament, your sacral ligament, and also in the cervic vesicle ligament. And also reduce the endometrial receptivity and reduce the endometrial receptivities. Also, they can have uh, some hormone receptive functions, and also they have a uh, make the immunology factor have a uh, peritoneal macrophage increase, and the uh, natural cure cells appear in the peritoneal fruit. So, in the patient have colon rectal deep endometriosis, they estimate they have uh, about the five to twenty five percent with endometriosis. They have a uh, intestinal embolment and the uh, colon rectum deep endometriosis sometimes present with a subocrutic or occlusive of the bowel. So they have a bowel, some bowel symptom and obstructive bowel symptom. And the pelvic endometriosis have a significant outbreak of 2.6 of bowel obstructions. And the intestinal endometriosis was associated with the 14 fold of increased risk of the bowel obstruction, with the rectal vaginal endometriosis associated with the two fold of increase of risk. So the overall prevalence of the bowel obstruction is about 1%. And 27.9% of women with colon rectum DIE have a progress as the seen by MR over three years the period. So most of the deep endometriosis, one fourth of the women suffer from the progress of the deep endometriosis. How about the endometriosis with the urogenic trick? Deep endometriosis may present in renal failure because of the urinary tract obstructions. And so whenever they have the deep endometriosis, you should evaluate the GU tract. And uh, also the majority of the patient with the deep endometriosis have the severe heavy pain. So the surgical intervention is indicated, but we shall remember evaluate the GI tract and also the GU tract. And also you got the history of the previous surgery is a marker for the severity of the disease, especially for deep endometriosis. 
and 78% of the patients with the deep endometriosis have a previous surgery of endometriosis, which may allude to a possible elevations of the disease by incomplete surgery. So the complete surgery of the deep endometriosis is a very important work for the gynecologist. So we note the deep endometriosis in the situation we need to perform the surgery. Just like the severe pelvic pain, they have unresponsive to medical treatment and uh, they have the obstructed urophacy of the half symptom of the bowel stenosis or they have a risk of ovarian cancers of the patient, they have a reproductive desire. So here we show you a patient, they have a, a braided endometriosis. We can find in the sonography, they have just a, a mess on braided, but on the cystoscope, we can find a growth, popular growth of the, the near present uh, in the cystoscope. So here, we just uh, uh, open the anterior bone ligament and uh, open the pyrethroid space and uh, identify the ureter. And then after the anatomy has been identified, we attack the lesions on the braiders. So here also have a, a adenomyces of the wrong ligament here. So we excite uh, the adenomyces on the, the wrong ligament and uh, also identify the ureter. And the uterine basal have been calculated and dissected because they have a several the upriding the artery, so the ascending branch of the uterine artery can be calculated and, uh, and dissected. So here we can identify the lesions, and uh, the lesions is about uh, four centimeters, and uh, the the schistotomy was uh, crossed by the three O uh, micro the two layer sutures, and the before. The suture on the 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 bridge, we have put the double Z uh, on the uh, on the ureters to identify the ureter, and the second layer suture was complete also by the micro, and then the round ligament have a, a push mate by the one the micro. So sometimes it's a silent the bridge involvement, but most of them we can see just under the schistoscope and do the bio sheet. And then you decide in on down, we can direct resections, but on the base, uh, we should dissecting the vesicle uterine space and the resect underlying myometrin because of adenomyosis there. So again, we see the patient, they have a deep endometriosis when severe pain, when of child uropathy, we have to do the surgery. But in the reproductive design, Shall we perform the surgery? Because of the controversy issue, when we look at the deep endometriosis, they may catalog in the minimum of severe endometriosis. So in the issues, when they got the minimum or mild endometriosis, complete resection may improve the art and the spontaneous pregnancy rate. But sometimes in the deep endometriosis, you can identify just before the surgery so actually, the DE may cut like in the minimum or severe endometriosis. Just like you have a three centimeters deep endometriosis because just the cut on the peritoneum. So you just get the scope of six. So it's a mild endometriosis. But this two, three centimeter, they maybe just have a four, scope four. So they have a minimum endometriosis. So you perform the resections of course, if you can. Again, sometimes just like we have shown you the two cases in the beginning, we do the IVF without diagnosis of the DE, it decreases the optimal clinic friction rate and not without potential serious adverse effect also. So there is a very fine journal, the GEMIC. They have a, the gamma, Dr. Gamma have a published data, review article and the systemic meta-analysis from the 150 article. And uh, lastly, they have a four included in the study. They have a DA surgery, compare the DA surgery before the IVF and uh, with the complete or incomplete surgery 
or subgroups with the power involvement or not. Finally, they're looking for the complication and the data regarding safety of concerns. So the result of the deep individuality patient before the IBF, according to the systemic review and the meta-analysis, we found the surgery before IVF, if they have a digestive emboldenment, they have the odd rate 2.4. It's a favor by Eugene Lapascope to do the surgery before IVF. And DIE result, digestive involvement, the odd rate is 1.55. So even in the incomplete surgery group, they also showed a higher precursor rate. Odd rate is 1.63. And uh, the clip frequency rate per patient was 1.84. And the live birth rate per patient was 2.22 times more likely to operate patient than for the non operate mm -hmm. one. He made a uh, conclusion is that they have a statistically significant benefit for surgery before IVF, although this should be confirmed with the RCT trial. But in addition to the referred outcome, the safety data is concerned in the D in surgery. So because of the very difficult surgery for the DE treatment, so maybe that is the last buzzer for the gynecology to learn how to have a DE treatment. Actually, if you know the anatomy, the space, the ligament, or the pelvic flow, then you may easily to perform the deep endometriosis surgery. We can find behind the bladder, in front of the vagina, there is the vesicle vaginal space. And they have the ligament, we call it superior vesicle uterine ligament. And uh, they have a right parallel vaginal space and the deep vesicle uterine ligament just uh, in between the right parallel vesicle space and the right parallel vaginal space. And also the, they have a cardiac ligament and uh, just uh, separate the paravesical space and the lateral paravesical space. And they have a uterus cycle ligament, have a separate the right lateral paravesical space and the right median paravesical space. So if you want, we have a, the endometrius on the uterus cycle ligament, we should identify right lateral paravesical space and the right median paravesical space. So we can dissect the uterus cycle ligament and lesions of weight. And also, they have a greater the endometriosis because of the maybe vesicle uterus ligament, they have adenomyces. So we should identify the vesicle vaginal space and the right paravaginal space. Then we can identify and resect the adenomyces weight. So the space and the ligament here is a very important for the deep endometrial surgery. So here is uh, from A, to Z to identify the deep endometriosis and how to resect the endometriosis. It's a 31 years old woman and uh, they have a little bit elevated T125. And uh, so in the sonography, they just have a small endometrioma and the left endometrioma with adenomyces and DE was uh, suspected. So in the procedures, first we can identify the tumors and identify the cul-de-sac of the regions and also identify the ureter first before you resect the tumors. Okay, here's the colon also that adheres to the left side. So you should identify the, the median parameter space first, then you can identify the ureter ligament, then you can resect the adhesion over the ureter ligament. So, here you just doing the adhesion like this and the resect the adhesion mend over the uterine ligament. So here will be the prerectal space. Prerectal space just in between uh, the two parietal space, median parietal space. So also we should identify the lateral parietal space. And here is the ureter. Here's and uh, here is the deep uterine artery. And here, also the uterine uterus cycle ligament here and the adhesion just over the uterus cycle ligament. So we, again, we identify the medians right side 
private space here. And uh, after the two participants identify the lesion on the ureter sac ligament could be excited. And also the ureter was identified. Here is the pre ureter space. Can be identified after you have a, the two median pyretal space have been identified. In these situations, the pre ureter space could be identified then. So we can use the sharp scissor to dissect these fibrotic lesions. And uh, also the pre ureter space have been identified clearly. We can use the Ritter Pro to help us to identify the space and also the returns. Also, here is the uh, ureter ligament adhesions has been identified and decided. So all the lesions have been identified and resetted. So the procedure is very important. The first is to restore pelvic anatomy first before you excite the lesions. And uh, secondly, identify your side ligament, not adhesion meant. Also, then identify ureter. So you can identify the later part space, also the uh, median parameter space. So then after the two parameter space have identified, you can create pre ureter space. Then you excite the deep endometriosis. And then after surgery, Attention prevention is necessary for the procedures. So we make a conclusion. Because half of the women with immature suffer from difficulty in conceive. So expert surgeons have showed the impact of surgery in all stage of endometriosis. It means now, even in a stage four endometriosis, written involvement of the breathing involvement in endometriosis, the expert surgeon can do a very good job in the excited lesions. And the laparoscopy remains the gold standard whenever deep endometrial surgery is indicated. Art treatment without diagnosis of the deep endometriosis decreases optimate clean pressure rate and is not without potential serious adverse effect. So identify the endometriosis and the deep endometriosis before art is very important. And we should perform deep endometriosis treatment before the art if possible. Compared sector of deep endometriosis, it might minimize deep endometriosis from eboding and was and over time, positively impact the woman's quality of life. And the approximate radicality of the endometriosis surgery have achieved over the decade in expert refer center. So you had better refer to the expert refer center because of the deep endometriosis. If you're not skillful in the, doing the deep endometrial surgery, maybe it's a good for you to refer to the endometriosis center. The surgeon have to evolved their technique based on their experience. It continue to be the challenges by the complexity of this uh, elusive disease process. Although the surgeons have to improve the technique, but the progress of the disease is still. So which came in mind, the principle of the surgeries. Training, training, training will be the last budget for the reproductive surgery. The best training for the best surgeon. I think that is very important for the endometrial surgery. Lastly, we welcome you to the 2022 Arpeg Annual Congress. Registrations is open already. So welcome you to submit your paper to the office and welcome you to the TAMIC and our page conjoint the meeting to all 22 from the September 30th to October 2nd. Welcome. Thank you for your attention. Okay, now I'm back. That is the video. And now you can uh, uh, talk to the Professor Chi Long Li, the real guy, not uh, as the AI. So uh, Professor Chi Long Li, I have the, my own questions. Yes. And uh, your last slide, you said the training, training, training. Yes. But by the way, I think sometimes it's very difficult between stop the operation or advance the operation. Because sometimes for the, for the surgeon, 
we know that uh, it's just one step, two step. The outcome is maybe better, but of course it's maybe more injury. Yes. And that time that we are the surgeon, we are the only one who make the decision. So I think this is very difficult situation. So uh, from your expertise, what is your advice? Yes. Actually, as a surgeon, we always think about the as a patient center. So we want to do best for the patient. So it, as a, as a surg surgeon, always want to do some more to the patient and that they can get better outcome after our surgery. It, all in our mind, we were thinking about the, how to improve, how to improve the, the, the outcome for the, the, the patient. But you know, when we do the deep endometriosis, they always have a very severe or very dense adhesion just over the intestine or over the ovary or tube. So it always have uh, some risk. So in the early stage, just like the stage one, stage two uh, endometriosis, have obviously they have uh, advantages over just leave it there. They have a very good result for the, the endoscope surgery. But to the stage three, stage four in the matrices, we can find they have a, some complication coming out. So they always have some controversy about the, should we do the surgery or we just let it be there? And fortunately, they have some paper, they still favor. If you can do something more to the patient, then patient will get a better outcome. So I have a review the paper from Zemic. They have a talking about the, the review article in four, uh, the outstanding paper. They have talking even you did not have a complete reset of the deep endometriosis they can have an increase in the clinical precision rate and also have a, a live birth rate will be increased. So if we can do better, of course, we should do complete resection. But if we are not able to do the complete resection, maybe we can do as possible as we can. And the, before we do as possible we can, we have better to have a training. And uh, I think that is, uh, you know, uh, in the, the air cut, they always have uh, some animal train and also have a cut up a train uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the laparoscopic surgery. So they have uh, several times our page uh, in the, also in Thailand, the, the German Thai center, we have a, a cut up a workshop every year there. And also have a workshop of animal in the Taiwan Earth Center. So I think that it's very important for you to improve your skill in the, doing the very complicated surgery. And so I think that you, when you have a doing uh, this procedure, uh, in the animal before doing the procedure in the patient, they will be have a, get you have a confidence and also have a get the ability, get the power to do the surgery. I think that will be very important so to the every gynecologist. So I say, I say that is a last buzzer for the gynecologist to complete. So I think the training is very important and that they are so there are many, many training uh, course, uh, include the animal life and the cassava life uh, uh, by host by our page. I hope you can join us. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you for your answer. It's very clear. Mm -hmm. So practice at the right place, mm -hmm. maybe uh, in Taiwan or maybe in Thailand.